The next week, Maury started offering generous amounts of cash to anyone who would crap in the bucket. <laughs> Are you that desperate? <laughs> Hello, friends. Trace amounts of science. Today, we're wrapping up the Funky P saga. I mean, I thought we wrapped it up already, but then we had this Funky P origins saga, and uh, I, I think I'm going to include them all in the same compilation. That just makes good sense to me. The previous entry, absolutely disgusting. All the previous entries, uh, there's a playlist in the description. Let's get into this thing today and see how it goes. Surely not terrible. Surely. <laughs> a degeneracy fail? Funky P backstory, final installment. And of course, welcome back to user Cringy Val. OP's note! I did a terrible job of teasing this chapter last time I posted. <laughs> so let me assure you that my esteemed beta reader and fellow funky loather noped out of this chapter, even after powering through the buttworm story like a champ. The drug use was too much for her. I guess this is also your trigger warning that yeah, there will be some usage of those substances. Lots of usage, <laughs> so, uh, enjoy! Yeah, uh, Red X Industries lawyers have informed me that I should say we, we do not condone any of this. What you choose to put in your body is your choice, but just, you know, try to be choosy. <laughs> in the wake of the worms is the title of this one. During his lovely little staycation, Maury got to know downtown Wellsprings and impulsively put in a bid for a swanky downtown condo. Yeah, because if you're rich enough, that's just a thing that you can do. <laughs> he had to return to the townhouse to deal with the hazmat crew, since Funky wasn't, you know, adulty enough to handle that task. Well, maybe he'd get it out if Maury wasn't fucking babying him every step of the way. <laughs> The townhouse did reek of doo-doo, but Funky made no mention of the stench. He only grumbled about not being able to get to the liquor cabinet without stepping in icky, sticky sludge. Hey, just throw a newspaper on top of it. You'll be fine. <laughs> this is all normal. It's not a big deal. Look, see? See how quick it goes away? And now might be a good time to propose a theory. Based on my own experiences with him, as well as the stories I've heard from the OG chummers, I think Funky had a diminished sense of smell, if not full-blown anosmia. That would explain his chronic overuse of perfume, his claims of obliviousness to the fishy fumes in his beard, his apathy towards Pongo's Pong, and his apathy toward the craptastic stench in the townhouse. Just a theory. I'll allow it. I mean, I'm a smoker, so I have a diminished sense of smell. Maybe that's what's doing it. Anyway, let's get back to the story. While the hazmat crew did their thing, Maury broke the news to Funky that he'd be moving downtown by himself. But he left the townhouse to Funky, encouraging him to enjoy his new bachelor pad. Dude, kind of sick, actually. When Funky griped that he was going to get bored living alone, Maury decided to pull some strings, and eventually he got Funky a job at a vegan gastropub that his mommy's beloved Eskimo sister slash his daddy's eccentric mistress owned. Eskimo sister? What? <laughs> There's a whole thing to unpack there, I'm sure. I can't get into it. Uh, yes, I'm talking about one woman, in case that was unclear. <laughs> It's possible that this lay fair attitude that Maury's parents had towards commitment was what inspired Funky to be terminally unfaithful and still feel like he was being a great boyfriend. Yeah, let's not make up excuses for him. <laughs> They're both degenerates, they spawned a degenerate who befriended the degenerate, okay? And I know there's people in the comments like, oh, Maury's the best character in the story. But I don't agree. That title belongs to Snorlax. Don't debate me. <laughs> Listen, you little wiseacre. I'm right, you're wrong. And there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, Maury, Maury's a degenerate like the rest of them. Sure, he's, he's empathetic somewhat. He knows how to deal with people, but it's entirely self-serving. And also, I think I just really resent rich people until I become a rich people, and then I'll be like, no, he's totally cool. <laughs> this is all normal. Whatever, I digress. Anyways... All I ever heard about Funky's parents were that they had both been in and out of prison for his entire life. So Funky spent his formative years on his grandfather's pirate ship. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. When Grandpappy got pinched for piracy, 
Funky went to live in his mother's brothel and got raised by ladies of the night who had managed to dodge the fuzz and continue working there. That feels outlandish and untrue, but I guess we'll never really know. Yeah, he's just a compulsive liar. I'm not, I'm not buying into any of that. He spent his days sitting in front of the electronic babysitter. Don't try and make it sound cooler than it was. <laughs> you just watch Robinson Crusoe one time, you're like, yeah, we lived on an island for a little while. <laughs> uh, so maybe Funky really was a, a pirate baby and a brothel child. <laughs> uh, now that I think about it, that might actually explain some things. My best realistic guess is that Funky was either raised in the system or by some relative with substance abuse issues, but he lied about almost every aspect of his life. And not just to me. He'd never ever been completely honest with his beloved Mori, as the GM reported to the other chummers that he had caught Funky in lie after lie after lie. And after lying to himself all these years, well, Funky probably doesn't even know his own truth. Yeah, and he's really angry about that, and he's gonna make it everybody else's problem. <laughs> so returning to Funky's surprisingly long stint as something resembling a wagee at a douchey vegan midtown hotspot, it turned out that Funky was creepily good at wearing a mask and pretending to be a gentleman for five or six hours a day, three or four days per week. And the better he got at pretending to be polite, the more he made in tips. Ah, uh, yes, a financial incentive to stay polite. I, I can understand this well. <laughs> so Funky used this job to hone his manipulation techniques. I'm pretty sure he also banged Mori's daddy's mistress at some point. I have no proof of that. It, it just sort of feels true. I mean, I don't know. Some guys are into Eskimos. What do you want? <laughs> it started out with a little rubbing of the noses, and then they had to rub something else together. <laughs> Damn, I'm probably speculating way too much right now. I'll knock it off and leave the speculation to our esteemed narrator, Red X. No, you and I can both speculate. We'll just make up the whole thing. It's good content. The people, they'll love it. Although I have been trying to get more into like researching stuff. Then I'm wrong less often. And if somebody says you're wrong, you can point them to a paper and be like, this is where I got it. Go argue with that author. <laughs> Uh, anyway, Funky fell out with Pongo when he went to visit the pants pooper in the hospital. Pongo's fungal toes had indeed been fused with his socks for what the doctors estimated to be three to four years. Oh my god. Oh my god! <laughs> How do you live like this, dude? What the fuck? This had necessitated a few piggy amputations and some skin grafting. Damn, dude. Damn! You got trench foot without ever sticking your foot in the trench! <laughs> so Pongo would have to stay off of his feet, or what was left of them, for a while. <laughs> a gastroenterologist was giving him an anti-parasitic and got him started on probiotics to improve his absolutely wretched gut health. They'd also assigned a nutritionist to his case, and there had been talk of gastric bypass surgery if he could lose enough weight to qualify. Man, we're all out here doing the most for a person who can't do a goddamn thing for themselves. I assume Mori's not paying for any of this, right? So Pongo's just drowning himself in debt? I mean, it's fine, whatever. What is debt really anyways, but <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to find myself in that situation. Anyway, Pongo's mom had re-entered the picture now, having left his woman-hating, do-nothing dad well over a decade ago. She offered to let Pongo stay with her indefinitely, as long as he kept up the hygiene routine that the nurses were teaching him. I hope he manages to reform himself, honestly, but I don't think it's gonna happen. <laughs> Pongo had noticed that a number of female nurses had been surprisingly kind to him, which made him rethink his blanket hatred of women. In other words, he was considering trying to turn things around. Good for you, boy. But it takes more than just a thought of wouldn't it be nice if. Y you gotta be willing to do the legwork, and I think that's where a lot of people fall down. But I'm rooting for you. <laughs> Funky, of course, was having none of that. He was cool with Pongo improving his diet and learning to bathe, but he could not abide making a conscious decision to try and think of FEMALES as people. 
Funky and his possibly reformed pet neckbeard parted amicably, but did not keep in touch. Well, damn, I guess we never really do find out, but I like to imagine the best. Sage was never going to forgive Pongo, and Athena had no reason to pardon the rude words of this random stranger, but Snorlax actually friended him on social media and gave him a virtual pat on the back for trying to become human. See what I said? Snorlax is the best. Don't debate me. I'm serious. <laughs> According to Snor, Pongo did manage to heal from the worms and the foot fungus. He started eating better. He got a job doing data entry and seemed to be functioning. His mom moved to another state and Pongo went with her, finally self-aware enough to realize that he still needed help with certain aspects of adulting. It might seem pathetic that he was living with his mommy at 30. You kinda. But I'm quite certain that Mommy Pong was a better influence than Funky. So no judgment from me. I mean, slight judgment from me, but also if you're working to get up and out, we, we all gotta start somewhere, you know? If you're lazing around Mommy's house all day, then yeah, you're a loser, but he's got a job and stuff, seems to be holding his own. He's doing what he can to play a little catch up, and we do encourage that. Uh, I would say that I feel bad for calling him a rancid blob in the previous chapters, but he was exactly that at the time. As long as he's still making an effort, I would never refer to present-day Pongo as a rancid blob. Snorlax said that Pongo doesn't update his Twitter or Instagram very often. That's not necessarily a bad thing. With cautious optimism, I say, way to go, Pongo? With a question mark. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, he, he still got a long way to go, but he's a long way from where he was, you know? Sounds like progress to me. We'll take it! <laughs> Part 6. Huff. Shadowrun continued. Athena had promised Sage that she would return at some point, but she needed some temporal distance from the inappropriate remarks and the pants pooping before she ventured back into the dystopian future. Even though Pongo was gone, Athena was in no hurry to return to ground zero of the wormy butt bomb and, well, Sage didn't press the issue. Yeah, I wouldn't have gone back over ever. <laughs> nope, nope. Not something I enjoyed at all. <laughs> so for a spell, it was just Mori, Sage, Snorlax, and Funky. And this is where Pongo's vile role in this story will start to make sense. Mori had gleefully watched both Snorlax and Sage barf in response to Pongo's involuntary bowel movement. So Mori implemented the shit bucket and increased the length of the gaming sessions, hoping that someone would have to poop and then that somebody else would puke. Yes, indeed, ever the puppet master. This didn't work. It's one thing to spout an outlandish rule like that, but every player, even Funky, had been socialized to perceive pooping as a private thing, which meant none of them were cool with going number two in a room full of people. They would either hold it, or they would dash to the bathroom and lock the door, telling Mori to go screw! <laughs> At last, Mori took it upon himself to take the dump, but... It did not have the desired effect. The guys merely laughed and engaged in dramatic displays of disgust, but nobody actually puked. Good. Keep holding it back. Don't give him what he wants. <laughs> a reasonably fit man with a reasonably healthy diet dropping a deuce into a bucket is certainly disgusting, immature, and malodorous, but it hardly compares to a smelly fat fuck filling his pants with wormy, explosive diarrhea. <laughs> I mean, the vast majority of us have probably dealt with animals pooping on the floor or kids needing help in the bathroom, disgruntled former employees crapping near the entrance to the bar where we worked. That one might just be OP, actually. <laughs> it's not fun! But it still pales in comparison to Pongo's giant, gelatinous ass exploding in his pants. Yeah, Mori's gotta eat like broccoli and cheese before game night. <laughs> I think he might stand a chance. Mori had managed, however, to convince everyone to up their alcohol intake. Snorlax still believed that Funky rode the short bus, so Mori played up that special needs angle and told Snorlax that alcohol quelled Funky's insecurities and that it would make him feel better to see the other chummers drinking. Sage knew damn well that Funky 
Well, he was just an asshole. So Maury convinced the assistant GM that a bit of the hard stuff might take the irritating edge off and make Funky more tolerable. And indeed, Funky seemed like less of an asshole. In truth, the Beard had lost interest in antagonizing the current resident pretty boy, since Sage had come down with a bad case of one-itis, taken himself off the market, and was no longer a threat to Funky. I mean, we are comparing pristine oranges with rotten apples at the moment. <laughs> There's no comparison you could draw between Sage and Funky. The fact that Funky even, even tries to draw the comparison, that's mind-boggling. Do you not see who you are and how you're perceived? Whatever. So the guys made absolutely no fuss about accepting the piss jars when those came into play. They needed them, since they were all getting absolutely blotto. On the night that Maury had taken a dump in the bucket and the team had filled four jars with ropey, dehydrated pee, Maury felt a jolt of inspiration for a new means of clouding everyone's mind. Maury, has anyone ever tried... Jankum? <laughs> you want some Jankum? It'll make y'all better. What's in it? My body weighs, silly. <laughs> Sage and Snorlax groan laughed, disgusted, but holding on to hope that Maury was joking. Sage, that's an urban myth. Doesn't actually do anything. Snorlax, I don't care if it's the best high in the world. I am not huffing sewage, bro. <laughs> Funky to Maury. Hey, didn't you say that it's like a delicacy in Africa? Maury, it's not a delicacy. It's a last resort. <laughs> Oh, good. <laughs> some say it's bogus. Some say it's a spiritual awakening. I figure we've got the ingredients, so why not whip up a few batches and see for ourselves? Sage and Snorlax were both firm fuck no's, but Mori and Funky were game. I guess if you want to do this to yourself, you go ahead, you know? Again, I'm not going to dictate what you choose to put into your body, but yeah. Just, just be more choosy, <laughs> if, if we could. I should also mention that the Shadowrun games continued to take place at the townhouse, and Funky had become the host. Seeing as he had gotten pretty competent at his Mater D job, he actually enjoyed having the Shadowrun crew at his house, and he was a surprisingly good host. Then it's like you're working seven days a week, isn't it? Kind of crazy. But maybe he needs this type of routine and schedule to, to keep himself sane. Uh, so Funky either brought food from the restaurant or ordered in when the guys kicked up a fuss about the lack of meat on the menu. He kept the liquor cabinet fully stocked and had the kitchen set up like an actual bar. He even baked cookies. They were pre-mixed Nestle Toll House cookies, but yeah, cookies nonetheless. It was kind of his calling. I wonder how different things would have been if Funky had continued to host the games. I mean, he come up with a bunch of stupid rules. Not let you in here without a jacket and a tie type of shit. <laughs> anyway, Maury looked up some Jankum recipes, measured the optimal amount of urine, spooned in the optimal amount of feces, funneled the raw sewage into two empty bottles, and placed balloons over the bottle openings. Bro, oh, this is nasty. Trace amounts of science, yes, but <laughs> couldn't be me. Funky was tasked with leaving the vile hallucinogen to ferment in the sun on the back porch of the townhouse for one week. But that didn't work. Apparently a week was too long, and the balloons popped, fouling the air with the pungent stench of sewage. <laughs> I mean, you can tell the balloon's getting too big, can't you? What a moron. Couldn't even make poop gas right. <laughs> Funky didn't notice the stench, though, and he got in trouble with the neighbors and was furious with Maury for failing to warn him that the balloons might pop and that it would be ferociously stinky if that happened. Maury eventually took the blame and bought matching Shadowrun tattoos for himself and Funky in an effort to keep the peace. Funky was extremely proud of his new tramp stamp. Yeah, you should pop poop balloons in the house more often. <laughs> you can reap all kinds of rewards. The next week, Maury started offering generous amounts of cash to anyone who would crap in the bucket. <laughs> Are you that desperate? <laughs> uh, 
Funky continued to refuse because, well, he was already on Maury's payroll, but Sage and Snorlax began to consider it. Even so, Maury was still the only player who was born without a sense of shame, so he once again took it upon himself to make the deposit. And this time, Maury announced that he and Funky would huff the Jenkum three days after game night, which meant Funky would be hosting a Jenkum party on Tuesday night. <laughs> nope, I'm gonna miss that one. The GM assured Sage and Snorlax that they wouldn't be required to huff, they were only there to witness the effects. Optimal ratios were mixed, balloons affixed, and the vile concoction was left to ferment on Funky's back porch atop a pile of bricks. Bro, I'm not going to that party, I don't care. <laughs> I can't even tell if any of you are acting strange. Well, because this group is full of weirdos. <laughs> it's just gonna be you two weirdos uh, breathing deeply of the, the feces. Then again, maybe somebody will feed bad and, and show up. I don't really know. So Tuesday night rolls around and Athena agreed to accompany Sage to the Jenkum Huffing Party. Dude, what? <laughs> it is actually gonna be a party. Okay, we all make choices. Not because she was keen to watch Mori and Funky's idiotic behavior, but because Sage had begged her to tag along so she could give him an out if the party proved to be overly disgusting. And because he kind of wanted to get fucked up and needed a spotter. Snorlax brought a baggie of psilocybin with him, hoping that Mori and Funky would agree to a far less vile means of inducing hallucinations, a tried and true means at that. Oh, well that part actually does sound kind of fun. <laughs> Funky was aghast that Snorlax was suggesting something as deviant as shrooms. How uncouth! Why the Jenkum was somehow fine yet shrooms were evil, I don't know. Well, Funky wanted to altruistically connect with the African children who had invented this repugnant coping mechanism. Wait, that doesn't sound right. He should try another excuse. Well, okay then. He also reasoned that one could accidentally get a similar high from walking past a busted sewer line, so this little experiment didn't really count as drug use. Still not buying it? Damn. Well, okay. The truth was that Funky sort of wanted the trip, but without doing anything scary like shrooms or Sid. Really? You think there's a deeper truth? Fine. Most of all, Funky... He just wanted to please Mori. Ding, 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 ding! And indeed, that probably is the correct answer. You're paying for me to exist? Sure, I'll huff your poop. <laughs> Disgusting! Uh, I mean, you already got your head so far up there. This is a little further from the source, but yeah, essentially the same thing. <laughs> Snore and Sage took to the kitchen to prepare the shroom tea, and Mori fully supported their decision to trip on a more conventional and less repugnant substance. As the guys made their tea, their hot spotter sipped an energy drink in the dining room. Funky arranged the throw pillows in the living room, while Mori retrieved the bottles from the back porch that were topped with brightly colored balloons. Mori got the neon pink one, Funky got the lime green one. If one didn't know better, they might be forgiven for thinking that the bros were just about to play a, a wholesome kids game. I suppose it did kind of start out as a kids game, just not a very wholesome one. <laughs> and soon everyone gathered in the living room. Sage and Snorlax with their cups of shroom tea, Athena with her rock star, and Mori and Funky with their sewage. <laughs> We definitely all make choices. I've never heard or researched or, or known about anyone that tried Jankum, so yeah, I am fascinated by this story. Do I think that it's going to go well? <laughs> I mean, nothing else does in these stories, so that's sort of a hint. Maury says, Tonight we shall enter another dimension. Whether we get there by way of magic shrooms or fermented effluvia, we must all thank a pile of poop for making these trips possible. Give your thanks to the feces! <laughs> Uh, Maury gently tapped the gong next to his pillow as the other chummers muttered, Thank you, shit. <laughs> Athena was trying not to laugh. 
Sage and Snorlax both sipped their tea, and Mori handed Funky a straw. You first, my shit-sipping samurai! Oh god, this is really gonna happen, isn't it? <laughs> We've gone too far. We can't go back! Mori pinched the lime green balloon, slid it off the bottle, placed some foil over the opening on the bottle to help contain the stench, carefully inserted the straw into the balloon, and held it up to Funky's beard. It was hard to tell where his mouth was under that unkempt jungle of facial hair. Nevertheless, Funky managed to wrap his invisible mouth around the straw that was sticking out of the balloon knot. Mori counted down and Funky inhaled deeply. And then he passed out cold. <laughs> All right, good fight, good night. And when we say balloon knot, we're talking about an actual balloon, right? Because <laughs> some people call another thing a balloon knot, like your b-hole. Anyway, the balloon farted out the remaining jankum, and yeah, now the living room smelled like a sewer, which everyone found completely gross, but it really wasn't any worse than smelling a busted sewer pipe which is pretty terrible. <laughs> Athena got up to light a candle and spray some air freshener, and the other chummers gathered around Funky to make sure that he was still breathing. Yeah, methane poisoning, dude. <laughs> he was breathing, though. After only a few seconds, Funky bolted up and began to giggle, a sound that no one, not even Mori, had ever heard him make before. Hey, I see lights. I'm on a spaceship. I'm sliding down a snail trail onto a plate of fish sticks and a custard. <laughs> uh, I'm invincible. I'm pretty. I'm Cal Drago. I, I'm sleepy. <laughs> then Funky curled up on a pillow, hugged another pillow, and cooed like a little baby. <laughs> Mori, oh fuck yeah, my turn. Mori repeated the steps that he'd taken to give Funky his huff, closed his eyes and sucked on the straw. Mori violently coughed, dropping the balloon as it farted out its contents, <laughs> once again infusing the air with that pungent aroma of raw sewage. Mori stayed conscious though, when he finished coughing and gagging, he dashed to the kitchen and chugged a bottle of water, complaining that the gruesome taste would never leave his mouth. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what else you expected. <laughs> Snorlax asked, so are you tripping, dude? Maury, no, I feel nothing. Well, I feel a bit nauseous, but otherwise I feel nothing. Sage, told you it was a hoax. Athena, then what's going on with the tall guy? Is he faking it? Sage, <laughs> probably. Funky, set up. We know you're faking it, dude. Funky didn't respond, however. Snorlax says, I don't know. Maybe it affects different people in different ways. Or maybe Funky's just really drunky. Yeah, you got the, the mix wrong is what happened, Mori. What you need is a bottle with two nozzles so that you can both huff the same mixture. Now that's quality assurance. <laughs> Ultimately, Mori just decided to have a cup of shroom tea. The three non-beardy male chummers had a grand old time dancing to the doors with a night sky room projector and enjoying a gentle trip. Three non-beardy? I think we mean two non-beardy and Mori. Although he's not as socially crippled as a beard. I guess he's just a degenerate. Anyway, <laughs> Athena found the tripping amusing and drove them all home when the hour got late, choosing to say nothing about how bad Maury still smelled when he got into her car. As was usually the case with him, Maury paid to get Athena's car detailed later that week. Yeah, when you got this much money, real life means nothing. I long to get to that point. <laughs> During the gathering, Funky would occasionally sit up and giggle and say something nonsensical and then return to a semi-conscious cooing state amidst the throw pillows. It was the one and only time that any of them would ever see him act happy, and he claimed not to remember a thing the next day. Had he been faking it? Had he really been that giddy but woke up feeling humiliated that he displayed happiness in front of his friends? Or was he really in some sort of altered state, tripping balls on dookie fumes of his one true love? <laughs> As with almost everything not directly observable, 
we will never know. He's faking it. Just another lie added to the pile of lies. Funky did allude to his Jankum trip once, when we were dating, as he chastised me for taking half of an Adderall before we went out one night. You never know what you're messing with. You might have no memory of this evening, and I know you do some deranged theater nerd shit even when you're sober. I did a mystery drug once, so I'm the expert here, Pixie. Once I heard the old Shadowrun stories and added things up, I laughed way too hard when I realized that Jenkum was Funky's mystery drug. Yeah, there's a reason he chose not to name it. <laughs> I too had thought it to be nothing but an urban myth. I still think it probably was, for the most part. Funky and Mori were outliers, although I doubt they were the only idiots who read about it and thought it sounded edgy and cool. But they were definitely far too old to be fucking with that quite literal shit. I mean, they're both a couple of Peter Pans, ain't they? <laughs> Just never want to grow up. Spend the rest of my day sniffing Jacob in the basement. <laughs> anyway, part seven, the degeneracy crystallizes. Yeah, right now it's like in more of a gaseous state. But I am looking forward to see it solidify. <laughs> At what point did Maury stop paying them to poop in the buckets? So yes, Maury's curiosity about Jankum having been sated, the degeneracy returned to nothing more than the pee jars, occasionally paying someone handsomely if they were able to drop a deuce in the bucket, making sure that everyone was drunk enough to already be feeling a little queasy when the deuce began stinking up the living room, and of course, this increased the likelihood that a chummer would chunder. And of course, there were the staff punishments. Yep, I'm already out of here. Guarantee it. <laughs> Aside from Sage beating Mori's ass after he whipped it out and tried to put it on Athena, the guys really had nothing to say about the omnipresence of the staff. They mostly paid attention to how excited Mori seemed to get when he messed with Funky. According to all accounts, he never sprang a semi or dragged things out for more than a few seconds with anyone except for Funky. Each night, the Chummers took bets on whether something a bit Greek would transpire between Mori and Funky, and Funky was just observant enough to know that the others thought he had something going on with Mori. And of course, he found this outrageously offensive, obviously. Funky was a completely hetero, ravenous poon hound who was far too logical to lavish his lascivious lust on a lad, <laughs> but now he felt the need to prove it. Uh, Funky really is such a weird case. He lives his life through everyone else's frame of reference. He can't be happy unless people see him a certain way. That's insanity. It's never going to be how you want it, so just work on being comfortable with yourself. Would you? Could you? He can't. <laughs> so, Funky started parading his skanks through the townhouse and up to his bedroom on the game nights. But he would throw a temper tantrum if those skanks weren't loud and enthusiastic enough. <laughs> See, he can't even enjoy it unless other people sign off on it. It's fucking weird. And Funky didn't always return reeking of rancid rug but a reeking beard was the result more often than not. Smells like wet cat food. <laughs> <laughs> of course, this only made the Chummers tease him even more mercilessly about his funky facial fuzz. From time to time, he would have a serious girlfriend, but that never seemed to hinder the skank parade. Having been one of those serious girlfriends, I can assure you that Funky did not take romantic relationships seriously. Unless by serious, you mean him having absolutely no sense of humor, because that was true. Every single thing he did was an attempt to gain social clout. Although the qualitative nature of the clout that he so desperately sought was constantly changing. As it always does. Like I said, just be happy with yourself. Sometimes it's difficult, but practice now. <laughs> Eventually, Sage bought a house that had a much larger living room, as well as a backyard, and since it was an actual standalone house, there was more distance from the neighbors, meaning that they could get considerably rowdier. 
Mori talked Sage into hosting the game nights that would eventually become game weekends, and Funky was pitifully butthurt over no longer being the esteemed host. That's right, you've been usurped by the pretty boy. Maybe you shouldn't have let him have it so easy after all. Even Sage admitted that Funky had put in more of an effort as the host and stated that Funky was noticeably less grumpy when he was hosting, but the rest of the Chummers agreed that Sage was better at keeping things under control. Believe it or not, Mori wasn't able to run quite as unchecked once Sage was hosting the games. I mean, he still ran the show, but Sage was sometimes able to put his foot down. <laughs> no random pet neckbeards, no jankum, no skanks in the house, and for a time, Mori even permitted him to put down a tarp in the living room. Sage couldn't recall why they had stopped doing that, however, because you get drunk and things fall off the rails a little bit. <laughs> You say and agree to all types of shit that you wouldn't normally say or agree to. And if you're wondering where Axton is, well, he didn't join until a year or so later, not long before Funky brought me around. Axton appears in a flashback that happens in the Married Mary saga, so don't worry, I didn't forget about him. I mean, how could I? He made me leave an epic snail trail all over Sage's house. <laughs> Uh, yes, that is a joke. I was really shocked by the person who was clutching their pearls over the term snail trail. I mean, clearly that individual has no sense of humor. Wait, was that funky? Oh no! <laughs> yeah, dude, he found us. Duck and cover! Someone suggested that it might have been the dookie selfie dude, which is also creepy. Nah, I'm pretty sure I can deny that right now. Jack Bunny, a.k.a. Mr. Floppy, and Jazzy Bunny are two different people. And I haven't seen Jazzy Bunny around since I decided to uh, die on the snail trail hill. <laughs> also, I haven't seen Floppy around since he decided to send bathroom selfies to Ramtide's lady. We deal with things pretty quick around here. It comes with the territory of not being a pushover. And I mean, it's probably a hot take, a bit too political for this video, but yeah. I will not have my own speech policed in such a fashion, especially with a term that's that inoffensive. You want me to call you this pronoun or that? I will. I, I respect your humanity and your choices. But all that has to do with, like, your own house, you know? You don't come into my house and tell me how shit should be. I definitely do weigh and measure the, the negative comments, but <laughs> especially that one in particular, it just holds no water. I'm sorry that that's a sticking point for you. We're just not going to agree anymore. Maybe you've outgrown the content in some way. And if that's the case, happy trails, you know? I'm still going to be here doing the thing if you ever decide to come back. Anyway, that's a little bit of Red X community deep lore, I guess. So finally, everyone let me in on a fairly enormous secret once Funky was officially out and I was welcomed with open arms, much of the drinking had been fake. <laughs> Typically, they'd all go balls to the wall on Friday night, but everyone except Funky tapered off on Saturday night and barely drank at all on Sunday. Athena had told them all to just water down their drinks. When Mori expressed concerns that Funky would feel self-conscious, Athena asserted that A, he wasn't paying attention to any booze other than his own, and B, knowing that he was the heaviest drinker would only make him feel superior if he did somehow manage to catch someone drinking watered-down booze. I find that watering down the booze makes it so much more disgusting, but yeah, I guess you don't get as drunk. You want another aside? I'm gonna give it to you anyways. One time I played a game called Neurovoider on my Dayton Does Gaming channel. It was a Halloween special, I was drinking some tequila, I think I had watered it down just to make the bottle look more full and also not to get as drunk because, you know, we have such a high special effects budget. <laughs> and then, like, maybe 15 or 20 minutes in, I, I literally projectile vomed everywhere. And it was a bad choice because I had a, a Subway tuna sandwich for dinner, which is basically the only food that I was eating or could afford to eat. And then I lost it all in the trash can. I was very hungry that night. <laughs> <laughs> but then a few days later, uh, one of the, the devs mentioned it on Twitter. So it kind of did some numbers. I mean, for back in the day. Whatever. You guys don't actually care. I just felt it bared mentioning. <laughs> uh, so yes, Athena was correct. 
The watering down and serving of tea and water, cosplaying as hard liquor, commenced, and Funky didn't seem to notice. Aside from being the only chummer with a bona fide drinking problem, Funky could call in hungover or show up completely blotto to work and still keep his job, since Maury's mommy and daddy had leverage over Funky's boss and would bend over backwards to protect their baby boy's bearded buddy. What the fuck for? I guess because they can. <laughs> but the rest of the crew, Maury included, had actual adult responsibilities, so yeah, they needed to be fully functional by Monday. Can confirm, adulting's a lot harder when hug over. <laughs> oh, and the spankings! We never saw one of those in the Shadowrun story. In truth, they were rare occurrences and probably not what you might be imagining. Mori wasn't the spanker, he was the spank E, and he got really into it. <laughs> it was widely considered to be the worst punishment because it went on for an uncomfortable length of time. Mori would constantly demand harder smacks, moan in unbridled ecstasy, and he made no attempt to conceal his physiological response to this subjectively arousing activity. Pretty weird way to go through life, but I guess like tickling yourself, you can't really spank yourself. <laughs> in fairness to the kinky GM, he always let the chummers off the hook if they told him that the spanking was out of their comfort zone. The only chummer who never noped out of a spanking was... Do I even need to say it? I'm gonna say it. It was Funky. It was Funky Peabeard. And this feels like it's getting hella long, so I think it's time to wrap it up. I'm gonna stick with attributing the whole downward spiral to a perfect storm of Funky's alcoholism, Maury's misguided coddling of Funky, and Maury's ability to step up as a warm, welcoming leader who was able to make pretty much anything seem fun. Just as Maury was a successful male model because he was obviously having fun with it, he was also a successful GM and possibly minor league cult leader because he did everything with a cheeky smile, flattering words, and usually the offer to share some of the mind-altering substances he had on hand. Did he mean any harm? I don't think so. <laughs> but I do recognize that he used his innate charisma and sometimes his family's money to convince people to do things that they would probably never do of their own volition. He might not have meant any harm, but that kind of thing could certainly harm someone psychologically, depending on their lived experiences and core value. I didn't see it back then because it was all a big joke to me, but yeah, I see it now. Yeah, I wouldn't have gotten down with any of that shit, man. I mean, I guess it's easy to say now that I'm, you know, not really struggling to make a living. But if he met me in my 20s just out of the Navy and told me, like, I'll give you 500 bucks to shit in a buck, I probably would have done it, you know? And it's humiliating and it's horrible, but is it any worse than the average adult video? <laughs> uh, so personally, Maury never traumatized me, says OP. He sort of did traumatize me, just from afar. I guess Pongo was the most traumatizing part. As far as I could tell, based on what the others have told me, he never traumatized them either. Funky, on the other hand, traumatized all of us in one way or another. Mori might seem like the villain to someone who wasn't there, but for those of us who were there, Funky was absolutely the big, bearded, bad. I suppose Mori was villainous in the sense that he enabled his pet neckbeard. Aside from a few failed attempts to reason with the beard, Mori basically just let the assholery anger and alcoholism run amok until the bitter end. Yeah, because it doesn't directly affect him, so why should he care? <laughs> Funky called all of us names, he threatened us, he tried to physically attack us, he vandalized our property, he made websites and social media pages dedicated to slandering us. I mean, seriously, fuck that dude. Do I end the backstory on that note? Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's a fitting ending. Fuck that dude. I mean, I wouldn't, but you definitely did, OP. But it helped open your eyes to some other things about the world, and I think that's the most we could ask for. A hard-learned lesson, but those are often the ones that are learned the best, or the quickest, or the most permanently. Bet you won't be caught in a situation like this again, right? Truthfully, I think Mori is just as bad as Funky, except in another way. He's definitely a likable human being. 
But yeah, because his family's got his money, he feels entitled to do whatever he wants. And what were the qualifications for neckbeards that I made up many years ago? It was delusions of grandeur and an oversized ego. And I think Mori fits both of those. I don't care about his social graces. He's just a neckbeard of the more palatable variety. Again, maybe hot take, but doesn't matter. I hope that you enjoyed the saga, friends. Uh, like, comment, subscribe if you would. I'd really appreciate that. Maybe sign up on the Patreon or the YouTube memberships. Like, consistent money coming in every month that I can count on. It is very important, crucial even, to the continuance of this channel. So thank you to those that have ponied up so far, but if you can't afford it, don't sweat it, friends. Uh, you know, you watch this far in the video, what else can I really ask of you? Except that you please remember that you are loved, you are worthy, you definitely, definitely deserve it, and I shall see you in the next one, so until then, bye-bye. Go ahead and cut him open. It's gonna be fine.